everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Dana, and today we are celebrating, ooh, hold on, Bill. And today we're celebrating over 1,000 subscribers. Yay! So thank you guys so much for sticking around and watching my videos and subscribing. So I was thinking about what I would do for the 1,000 subscriber video, and one of my favorite things is dragons and surprisingly somehow I haven't done any kind of dragon paintings on this channel yet so um, if you guys couldn't tell the theme today is dragons even Bella is getting festive with her little dragon costume he's so, so cute anyways so today I painted this um, sort of Game of Thrones inspired but uh, we all know how that ended so but the books are still great and I still love dragons and this could be any mythical dragon scene you want it to be. Um, so yeah, in celebration of a thousand subscribers, I figured we'd do an epic fantasy dragon scene. I planned to make this video uh, a while ago because we actually hit a thousand subscribers um, a couple months ago, but I've been working on a bunch of other projects, which I am gonna start filming some of my other projects I do which include like more arts and crafts and some cosplay and costume stuff that I've been doing a lot and since I've been doing so much of that I haven't had as much time to do the painting but don't worry still gonna do painting tutorials but if you're interested in seeing some of the other oops, some of the other creative artsy crafts kind of stuff I do I'm gonna start filming that stuff and put it on the channel as well since um, my painting tutorials have, you know, been a little sparse, so look out for that as well. And now, on to the painting. And as always, before we get started, here are some supplies that you will need. First, you'll need something to paint on and some paint, of course, some brushes, some water, and some paper towels or something to clean your brushes off. All right, so the first step is we're gonna make a really pale yellow. So you're gonna start with some white and just a tiny bit of yellow and mix those together until you get something that's just barely off white. And I know it looks very similar to the canvas color and so you can't really see it all that well, but this is gonna help give you a base to blend some other colors in. Also, I'm using um, a larger brush. So you wanna use one of the larger, largest brushes you have so that you can cover the canvas quickly. Okay, so the next thing you're gonna do is grab some more white and you can just mix this right into that yellow and grab a little bit of your magenta and a little bit of the blue and we're gonna make a really light purple kind of lavender color and we're gonna use this to mix into the sky and we're gonna be putting a lot of different colors into the sky, so don't worry if the color is not the exact same as my color. You just want a light purpley color, and you're gonna blend that right into the yellow. And you wanna keep brushing that back and forth until those colors kind of merge together and blend. And that's why you wanted that pale yellow there as your base, so you have something to blend this really light kind of purpley color into. And now I'm gonna add a little bit of blue in there and a tiny bit of black and we're gonna make this a bit grayer. And you might have to just keep adjusting it, adding a little bit more white, a little bit more of the, the magenta or the blue to get it just the color that you're looking for. I'm just trying to get kind of a grayish purple lavender color uh, to make my sky gradually go from that pale yellow, which is supposed to be like where the sun is shining through, because eventually we're gonna put clouds on this. And then it goes, um, it kind of fades into like a darker, like grayish cloudy color look, or like overcast look. So just keep blending and blending and blending so that these colors kind of melt into each other. And you just wanna keep getting your colors progressively darker as you go from one side of the canvas to the other. 
So you can see I'm mixing up a slightly darker version of that color using the same colors on the palette and just mixing right on top of the old color and that way I can kind of see the like if it's getting darker or lighter if it's the same color so if I just mix right on top and you can see I'm just keep adding it and again you want to blend right into that previous color so that those colors kind of melt or blend right into each other and I'm just gonna keep filling my canvas up and just progressively get darker and darker as I go. So you can see here, now that I've gotten to the far corner, I've gotten my color to be a very dark purple, and I'm just gonna keep on adding more dark colors as I go from the top of the canvas down to the bottom of the canvas as well. So just keep filling up the whole thing, and you're basically just going from light to dark, from one side to the other side of the canvas. And it doesn't matter if as you're mixing, these colors come out a little different than the previous color, because you just mix them right in, and really, the more colors you have, the better it will look at the end. So now I've got the canvas pretty much filled up and I'm just gonna go back in with my brush and grab a little bit more white and create like these streaks to help blend the colors together and also create all that kind of effect of like sun rays shining through. So like that streaky white effect. And now we're gonna go ahead and mix up some colors for our clouds. So we're gonna go back to a light color again because again, we're gonna start on the light part of the clouds and work our way to the darkest part. So mixing a very similar color that we did earlier and you can see that it almost matches the color of the background. And we're just gonna take our bigger brush and we're gonna pounce that color on. And you can use your finger or a paper towel if you prefer. And you're just gonna kind of smudge those clouds to give them those soft, fluffy, like cotton candy edges. And if you've watched any of my other videos where we've done clouds, it's the same exact technique um, that I always do for clouds. So again, you can use a paper towel or your fingers. I like using my fingers usually because it gives you a softer effect, but whatever you prefer. Um, and we're just gonna add clouds going all over the canvas using this technique. And again, just like the previous step, we're gonna do it all different colors. So in the area where the sun is shining through and it's lighter, we're gonna have our clouds be a lighter color. And then as we move across the canvas, just like the background sky, we're gonna add darker and darker clouds as well. So I'm just starting with all these lighter clouds and we're just gonna build up these layers and add lots and lots of fluffy clouds going all over the canvas in all different colors. Some of the clouds I'll have will be a little bit more blue, some will be a little bit more purple, some will have more pinkish color, and that's just to create depth to the clouds so that the clouds look like there's just lots of layers of clouds and they don't look flat. And it's totally fine to go back and forth between doing darker clouds and lighter clouds and layering those on top of each other because again, it'll just create more depth to your painting, the more colors you have and the more layers of clouds you have. So you can spend a ton of time on this if you want. Like you could just, you know, paint clouds all day if that's what you like to do. And it really can be very like relaxing to just kind of zone out and just paint happy fluffy little clouds all day. So 
So we're still painting clouds, and now we're gonna start adding some really dark, almost ominous clouds on the uh, far corner here. And again, you're just gonna keep working these clouds in and still keep layering more colors so that you can kind of blend these clouds and make them kind of like cohesive with all the other clouds. And yeah, just keep adding clouds until you fill up the whole sky with clouds, all the different clouds that you want to add. Hopefully you guys enjoy cloud content because there's a lot of clouds in this painting. It's mostly clouds actually, so yeah, clouds. Okay, so finally done with clouds, and now we're gonna mix up another kind of purpley lavender color again, um, but this time it's gonna be for our distant horizon. So mixing up that white and blue and purple, maybe a touch of black, again, it's right on top of the other colors, and um, you just wanna make a color that's a little bit darker than your sky so that it stands out, and we're gonna create just like a soft, hilly landscape and um, you can see that I didn't like my first color, so I'm gonna go back and change it. Um, just make it oh, a slightly like grayer color. So if you don't like something you do, you can always just, you know, make a new color and paint right over it. It's really easy, especially with acrylics. So once I have a color I like, and honestly wasn't even that different from the original color, but whatever, I liked this one better. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and fill in this little hilly landscape and just keeping those like soft rounded hills. And you can see I don't really go all the way over to the left side because I know I'm gonna put a big cliff there later. So there's no point in like spending a bunch of time filling that area in when I know I'm just gonna cover it up. And I am just using my finger to kind of soften that horizon line because I want to make it look like it's kind of fading into the background into the clouds. Okay, so now I'm going to use a smaller brush and I'm going to mix a color uh, just slightly darker than this color. Again, I'm just mixing right back on top. And I just want this to be a little bit darker because I'm going to make the little hill that our castle is going to sit on. So this one I, wanted look, I want it to look like it's um, slightly further forward in the foreground. So it needs to be just a little bit darker because usually when objects are closer to you, they look a little bit darker and that's how we can create some perspective. Also, I'm painting it in really rough and kind of chunky because that will create some texture that will make it look uh, more rocky like texture. So for the actual castle shape, I would suggest um, getting some reference, looking up uh, a type of castle that you like. What I'm doing is just really rough and really simple, just stacking a bunch of like square shapes together and then like to make the rooftops adding triangle shapes on top of those. And you'll notice that like it, my castle kind of changes because um, I wasn't happy with the first version of it. I thought it looked too short and like, I don't know, not castle-y enough. 
So um, I do end up like painting over some of the towers and making them a little taller and thinner. So, you know, play around with it. And if you don't like it, because of the cloudy background, it's actually really forgiving that you can just mix up a cloud color and just paint right over it and start over again if you don't like it. The other thing I would suggest is practice um, on a separate piece of paper first instead of doing it right on your canvas, um, especially if you're not like super comfortable drawing and you haven't drawn castle shapes before and you're nervous about it, just practice it first until you get a shape you like. You could even make yourself a stencil if you wanted. So if you were to draw out a castle shape on a piece of paper and you really liked it, you could just cut that out and you know stencil it for yourself. That would also work. Um, but another thing I'm doing for the castle is once I get shapes that I like, and you can see here, this is where I'm like covering up and making the towers like taller and skinnier. But another thing I did, is use lighter and darker versions of your color to create those shadows and highlights. Um, you can just leave the castle as a flat silhouette if you wanted because it's like far in the distance, but if you want to give it a little bit more detail, you can see that I've gone through and added um, like darker colors in areas where I want it to look like shadows. And especially on the rooftops, I did a lighter color to create those highlights and that helps separate the shapes and give it a little bit more detail. So now I'm going back to a larger brush and I'm mixing up a really dark, very, very dark purple color, like almost black. And this is gonna be that large cliff that I was talking about. And this is kind of the, the shape that's like, um, as far as the geography that's like closest to us. So that's why it's gonna be like the darkest and biggest shape. And you could just use plain black if you really wanted to. I always like to mix a little bit more, like a little bit of my other colors into black so it's doesn't look so flat, um, but it's basically looks almost black anyways. So we're just gonna um, draw in that rough cliff shape and then you just wanna go in with a lighter color and add little highlights to give it a rocky texture. And these don't have to be anything in particular, like just random little shapes and to kinda highlight areas to make it look rocky and that'll give it some texture and make it look a little bit more realistic. And I'm adding a smaller little cliff over here just to layer in front of the castle again to just give us some depth and like perspective in the drawing. So again this is going to be another really really dark color. I'm just using um, a very similar color to that other dark cliff and layering this in front. And again it's just a, a really rough kind of abstract shape and if you want you can go in with a lighter color and add a few streaks and highlights onto this cliff as well to give it a little bit more texture. Okay, so now let's grab um, our smaller brush again. And again, using that really dark color, we're gonna start our dragon. So I'm starting the dragon with just a simple curved line. And just like with the castle, what I would suggest for the dragon is to practice drawing it first on a piece of paper, especially if you're not super comfortable with drawing. Um, because even though I keep calling these simple shapes, they might not be simple to you. I've drawn a lot of dragons before, so to me, they're a little bit simpler, but if you've never drawn a dragon or you don't draw at all, this could be very intimidating. So I would, suggest that you practice. And of course, look up reference because um, the best way to figure out what you want your dragon to look like is to look at other dragons. And because they're not real, you can also get away with making up a lot of stuff. So you can look at other dragons that you like, um, you know, pick some of your favorite dragons. Uh, for this painting, um, I based mine off of the Game, Game of Thrones dragons. Um, they're not necessarily my very favorite dragons, but they're some cool dragons. So you can just look up your favorite dragon or just make up your own dragon. And that's the thing that's great about uh, mythical creatures is that there's no real like one way to draw them because they're not real. So have fun with it. Um, so here I'm just uh, switched to a smaller brush for the smaller details on the feet, which I would definitely suggest you do. And don't use a janky brush like I am, but oh well. Trying to keep this beginner friendly, so 
um, not too worried about tiny little details. But if you are more comfortable with drawing, you can go crazy with the details and you know make really elaborate dragons and uh, yeah, just have fun with it. So I am adding an arm to my dragon to make it a proper dragon uh, because a lot of times, well, <laughs> this is gonna be like super fantasy nerd, but technically a dragon has legs and arms and the ones that you see without arms where it's like attached to the wings, those are like wyverns technically, I think. Anyways, that's just getting really deep and nerdy. You can make your dragon however you want and you can call it whatever you want. So I'm um, adding some scales and horns and details to my dragon. You can do this as much as you like or as little as you like. Again, I would suggest just looking up some of your favorite dragon designs to see what you like. And you can kind of jump around. I think I jump around a bit when I'm adding the details. Like I started adding scales on the back and then went back and added more to the face and you know, it doesn't matter. Just have fun with it. And I would say um, this dragon's probably based more out of my imagination than actually the dragons from Game of Thrones because I didn't look at reference and I don't think this matches the design they had for Drogon. So it's, you know, it's just a kind of a generic dragon, but you can make whatever kind of dragon you like. And I'm gonna go ahead and add some wings for my dragon. And I'm just going with the classic generic bat wing design, but you could do anything. I've seen people put like butterfly style wings on dragons and you know really creative stuff so again you could look up reference or just make stuff up and like I keep saying if you're not comfortable try it out on a separate piece of paper first to to work out your design to get it exactly how you like. And you could stencil it too if you wanted. You could like create yourself a stencil. And if you're really bad or really nervous at drawing, you could find a dragon stencil, like a silhouette online that you like. You could print it out and then cut it out and make a stencil of it too. And I'm um, not filling in the wings all the way right now. So you can see that the paint is a bit transparent. So I'm using more watery paint and that's because for this dragon I do want to put an accent color in the wings to make it look like light is showing through and also to give it the red and black color scheme that uh, the dragon has from the books and the show. Uh, but you can make your dragons whatever color you want. You don't have to do multiple dragons either. You could just make one dragon if you want. It's really up to you. And also, let's just talk about dragons for a second. What are your favorite dragons? Please put them down in the comments. Um, I do love Game of Thrones and the Game of Thrones dragons, despite what happened in the show. And really, the first four seasons of that show are still fantastic. Some of the best television ever, especially if you're a fantasy fan. So I would still highly recommend watching at least season one through four. And then, you know, it kind of goes off. And then by the last, season yeah anyways some other great dragons smaug and you know that also <laughs> the hobbit was not the greatest trilogy lord of the rings fantastic best movies possibly i suppose arguably but in my opinion some of the best movies ever made and then when they get to the hobbit and we have a dragon in there and smaug which like has one of the best scenes in the book and that movie also was a or well, I should say movies, because it should have been just one movie, but then it made so many of them, and unfortunately, it was a disappointment as well. <sighs> oh well. Still a great dragon, Smaug. And, okay, back to the painting. Um, adding this red color for the wings as an accent color, and this also kind of makes it look like light shining through the wings. So again, just add as much or as little detail as you want and as many colors as you want to your dragons as well.
So now I'm just gonna go back and redefine some of, um, I guess, like, I don't know what you would call these, like the bones in the wings, just to give a little bit more detail. And you could go in and add shadows and highlights to uh, make your dragon look more three-dimensional as well. I am gonna go in and put some highlights, uh, but I don't go too crazy with the shadows and highlights on this. I kept it pretty simple, but you, uh, again, could be as detailed as you want with yours. So now I'm going to mix up a slightly lighter color using um, the colors I use in my dragon. Again, just mix everything on top of the same. You'll see that the color palette for this one is just one big blob of color and I just keep mixing on top. But you just want a color that's slightly lighter and this is what I'm going to use for those highlights. And this can help define some of the parts of the dragon, especially to like um, make it look a little bit more three-dimensional and add some highlights from that sun. I'm going along the back and I'll go along the legs and the wings and everything and just, you can add as much of this to bring out the shapes of your dragon or you can just keep it really simple and more like a silhouette if you want. Again, it's always up to you. And you can try out like adding detail and if you don't like it, you can just paint over it. So right now I'm just, um, trying to make the wing look like one wing is in front and one wing is behind just by adding some shadows and highlights around it and around the legs and arms and different features to make them kind of pop a little bit more. Okay, so now I'm gonna use a really tiny brush and I'm gonna mix up a color for his eye. You don't have to add eye if you don't want to, but I wanted to add a red glowing eye. So I'm mixing some um, magenta and yellow to create a nice bright red. And sorry, my hand is in the way, but I'm just drawing a tiny little eyeball. And I'll zoom in. And to make it look like it's glowing, I'm gonna go at back and put like a brighter like orangey kind of yellowy color in the center of it and you could add even more like orange highlights around the face if you wanted to make the glow even more intense and dramatic and you could even use that co same color to add flames coming out of the mouth if you wanted so next I'm going to mix some yellow and blue and a little bit of my dark dragon color that I've been using for the whole painting and uh, make kind of a grayish green and this is for the second dragon and again you don't have to do a second dragon you could just end at one but because I was doing this loosely based off of the Game of Thrones dragons there are three of them so the second one I wanted to have kind of a green tint and I'm gonna do this one much smaller so it looks like it's farther away in the distance and with this one it's gonna have much much less detail and just be a very generic kind of dragon silhouette shape but I'm starting it again with just a um, curved line to just get the general shape and direction that I want the dragon to go and it's kind of like a snake like shape and then just add some wings and any other small details you want again you can keep these really really simple for these other uh, dragon shapes you could also get really creative with your dragon shapes like these are very kind of classic dragon shapes but you know if you look at like the how to train your dragon 
dragons, those ones are very creative. Like they have all different types of dragon shapes. Like there's like round dragons and like little short dragons and skinny dragons. So you can get really creative and have a lot of fun with the different types of dragon shapes. And uh, you could put a whole fleet of dragons on here if you wanted. You could like fill the sky with dragons if you wanted. And I'm adding a little bit of a lighter color, so I just added white to that color to add highlights if you want to add some detail. And you really don't have to um, with these smaller ones. And you can see that dragon has hardly any detail, but from far away, it'll look like a dragon shape. So for my last dragon, I'm mixing up a lighter, it's sort of a yellowy gray. I mixed white and yellow and then added a little bit of black to make a gray for the um, golden dragon for Viserion because he's supposed to be like white and gold, but it's kind of hard to put like a white dragon on such a light background. And he's supposed to be a silhouette and kind of a shadow in the distance. Also, I didn't really like the shape of him when I first drew it because he looked like a manta ray. So I just mixed up a little bit of the cloud color and you can kind of go in and re-sculpt it. But he's also just supposed to be so far away in the distance that I'm not too worried about like a super perfect shape. As long as it has like wings and a general dragony shape for your silhouette, Especially from far away when you see it, it'll look like a dragon. Okay, so now um, for Daenerys, or if you want to add a figure on the cliff, it doesn't have to be Daenerys, it could be whatever person you want, or you don't have to. But I'm just using some uh, white and a really small brush and doing a really simple silhouette. Uh, it's kind of, her dress is almost like a triangular shape, and then I'm just adding an arm, you could add some hair. Again, if you're not comfortable drawing silhouettes of people either, you can practice this. She's almost like a stick figure with just a long flowy dress though. You don't have to get really detailed. Um, I didn't even like make any like skin color or hair color or anything for her. I just kept her as like kind of a glowing white ethereal presence. I just thought that would be far simpler than trying with such a tiny brush on such a tiny scale because she's really only like a couple inches tall on the painting and to try to squeeze that much detail into something so small is kind of tricky so I just wanted to keep it really simple and then I just went in with a slightly darker color just to add a little bit of shadow and give it a little bit of texture so and then you can go back with um, a lighter, like with white, and go in and brighten up the highlights again. And I also took some really watered down white, and I smudged it all around her to give her like a glow, because I just thought it would be kind of cool. Not that that's really accurate to the story or anything, but this also isn't like accurate to Game of Thrones. It's just loosely inspired, because it has three dragons and a girl that's wearing white but it could be any anything you want. I just thought it would look cool to have like a glowing like lady reaching up to the dragons. I thought that would be pretty, so that's what I did. And I'm also just gonna smudge a little bit of this white down on the ground so that it looks like um, her glow is affecting the ground too. And so it's almost like the opposite of a shadow. So now we're gonna go back to the bigger brush and mix up a really light color again with the um, same colors we've been using, and we're gonna do more clouds. But this time they're gonna be really light, misty clouds to kind of fill up the foreground. Uh, because right now it's just kind of plain, and I wanna make it look more magical, almost like this cliff and the dragons are coming up out of the clouds. So um, for this, I'm just gonna pounce those clouds on and then immediately go in with a paper towel and smudge them out so that they are very transparent and almost disappear so do this a little at a time because the paint dries really quickly so you just want to uh, slap some clouds on there real quick and then take your paper towel and um, swirl them or smudge them around until they get kind of smoky and do this with all, all the different colors that you used in the sky as well so adding some like blue clouds you can add some more purpley like pinkish colors and then just kind of fill in the whole area as much as you'd like to kind of give it a nice like magical, misty look.
So I'm also adding clouds kind of around the dragons. I don't want to cover them up completely, but I also want the dragons to kind of look like they're coming out of the clouds and I want some depth and for the castle as well. So you can make some of these clouds overlap so that it looks like that they're not all just in front, that the clouds are kind of all around. And again, you want to work quickly because you don't want to accidentally paint over all your hard work. You need to smudge those clouds out right away before they have a chance to dry. And remember to use watery paint because if your paint is too thick, it might cover them up more than you wanted it to. And then you'd have to go back and like repaint it again. So just adding more and more smudgy clouds all over as much as you like. You can go crazy with this or you can do just a little bit. It's really, you know, whatever you think looks good. And yeah, that's it. That is my dragon painting. Your little wings are. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. As always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, subscribe, ring the little bell icon so you can be notified every time I upload. And if you have suggestions for what I should paint or make next, leave them down in the comments below. And here are some previous, these are probably, some of these are probably pretty old, but I just wanna throw them up here as well for all of you who have painted along with me. So again, if you do paint along with me, let me know, tag me on your social media so that I can see them and I will try to get you guys in the videos as well. So again, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye. Also, I always forget to mention I am on Patreon if you guys wanna help support the channel in that way. Okay, bye.